Uh, have you seen the article in the signpost? Apparently, on the first day of the comedian, uh, the chapters died. The chapters of the education died. 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 Yeah. Ed's been posting on that all day. Yeah. Okay. Chapters Association self destructs. By the way, this will be an audience participation talk. <laughs> awesome. I'll be honest. Well, I've had other people. There's like 50 people who show up. I may not have as much audience participation, but. Uh, apparently, I'm the only person signed up, so. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one in this session. So, uh, I may change my basics and administration to basics and intermediate. <laughs> If we have fewer, fewer people, give them, I'll just tell people come up here, try it out. Uh -huh. That's, you know, why not? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm supposed to look at this up. I'll be in the restaurant, I'll be back. I know. 14 minutes to go. Well, we have 14 seconds on the first one, so... Yeah, 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 that's good. Worst comes to worst, we can concentrate on that. <laughs> Yeah, I, there, I went for a, I went for a slightly smaller one. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, it's not. It, the actual size doesn't matter too much for the theory. Okay. Adam, this is the one I was talking about. Oh. Oh, <laughs> neat. Hmm. Was he actually? Was he actually Oriental? Well, Oriental as it was the term was used at the time. Egyptian. Or? Yeah, he was Egyptian. Right. <laughs> Because there are a lot of people who just pretended to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Either JPEG artifacting or film grain on there. I think it's film grain because this uh, the tip was from. Uh, yeah, what well, that probably is film grain actually. So he they they're, they're, it doesn't it doesn't fit into little squares ever, so it's probably JPEG does. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's film grain because it was like it that looks like the... film grain to me. Now I dug up a pretty nice one. Uh, okay. I haven't restored it yet because I've been busy, but it's actually probably in your field. Oh. Uh, I, think she, I, think I think she was an. I do a lot of stuff, stuff on it. Oh no, that's... Ah, uh, here we are. Attempted restoration by some or modification by I think that's actually from her dress. Oh, good, yes. Um, this is one of the reasons you'd always zoom out. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, I haven't started to. I downloaded this at the same time with the Anastasia. Mm, uh, yeah. This was much more difficult, and Anastasia is a much more well known figure. So yes, frankly, uh, the thing about actresses is that. Um, Yeah. There are, um, I forget who have a painting of an actress. Uh, Nan 
fancy syrup is what I did. Okay, mm. okay. well, we have more than four non no, testers. <laughs> uh, no, stage actress painted by a notable painter. Why am I going to FAC that I'm being sucky with programs? Okay, yeah, hi, just in case of one of the mechanics. The downloads in time, well, they'll download in time. That's it, I'll just skip, I'll just uh, skip it as an example. <laughs> it's um, actually my next FPC, probably, when I get home. It's Puss in Boots, basically. Awesome. In, in, a, in one of those beautiful German lithographs. Do you know the one that's like a Victorian of like about 18, around 1850, right around the start of the graphs? Let me show you it.
this topic as well. Okay. The, that's the last one. Not the baby. What's that speaker? Yes, my now. That's the speaker. And okay. Let's get started anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's being filmed, right? <laughs> okay. Um, is the film, is the camera on? Yeah, camera is on. Right, Well then. Yes. Welcome to Lightning Talk 6, and my name is Adam Fjord, and I'm going to be talking about the basic image restoration. Um, just to give you some idea of what I do, is these are my featured pictures from the from the start of uh, July on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this, yes, they finally did promote this one. So, twelve. <laughs> um, we're gonna, today we're gonna be looking at looking at some live restoration of a couple images from the Library of Congress site. One of these is Levi Parsons, um, which was actually my last feature to picture, well, my last image of restoration before I came here. Although we're using a slightly smaller copy simply because it makes it a lot faster to download when your computer breaks down um, a couple hours before you give the talk. <laughs> we'll also be looking at this image of um, the Der Gestifette Kater, or Puss and Boobs in English. Um, it's not that hard to do, really, um, the basics of image restoration. It gets harder once you um, get into it, but the problems that are require more difficulty can usually be seen um, even at this scale. It'll be something like the image is missing this corner, or the image has this huge crease mark that um, will lead to be, that's obviously changing the dimensions of the text. I'll have to use perspective tool to make it actually fit into the lines and that kind of thing. Or um, to give an example of the worst one I've done, um, Utopia Limited. Or the image is divided into a whole ton of tiny little squares. which you can't actually see because the computer's being funny, but never mind. It was divided into like lots of little squares because the image had been folded up and then fell apart at every single crease. <laughs> um, so, let's begin. I'm using new, um, GIMP, the new image manipulation program. It's a freely available program. If you search for GIMP online, you will fi usually find it as a first search result, although um, Turn safe search on because I can make no promises what will happen if you search for it with um, safe search off. Given it also a big given that they were rather naughty when they named the program. Anyway, we'll start with um, Levi Morton. Um, this was the vice president of the United States under um, Benjamin Harrison, I think. Although citation needed on that point. As you can see. Um, this is one of the scarier forms of image degradation you get on older um, you get on older pictures. The let's 
the, the, there, this is a glass slide, and the, the negative is attached to the slide and develops that way. But sometimes it starts falling off the slide, and you get this weird encroachment onto the image. Um, weird fact about this picture I noticed when I was doing the restoration for it. These two heads are nearly identical, but he's facing different directions. <laughs> um, well, my best guess is that they used, because you have the images, photographs took so long to um, develop in the, to, in the old days, you had to like sit still for a long time. They often had back braces. So I suspect what they did was they had a back brace on him to hold his head in place, and then they had him move his shoulders slightly while in the back of the brace. Give, keeping the head exactly the same place. Uh, this is also a common way of doing it. You, um, they wanted to, they had, wanted to put two on one negative and choose the best one, and you would crop it down from there in some way. So, um, one of these is maybe theoretically restorable. One of these is much more easy to restore, and since they're about, since they're most more or less the same. We'll be doing the easier to restore one, for obvious reasons. So then, the first thing to do is to go into at least 100% view. Um, 200 or 400% can be good if you are younger. And um, we'll pause for a moment here. Um, you alright to go? Uh, right, then, so we'll start at 100% and we can go larger if we need to. Um, there are two basic tools we can use. The first is the... Uh, oh, yes. The first tool we can use is called the clone, uh, clone tool. What it does is if you select a bit of the image, um, you do this with using control click it will copy that over to where it is. So if I control click here, I can copy that bit of damage. And I can undo with control Z. Um, this is PC commands. You'll have to modify them slightly for MacBooks or that kind of thing, but there, it'll probably be command click for, and for this. Um, the other tool is the healing brush. If you use a healing brush, it attempts to match the local colors. So if I take this lighter bit and I move over to here, I can remove these little spots without, um, while making it blend in with the rest of the image. This is rather useful, as you can imagine. Um, there are several brushes you can use. I suggest using one with a slightly fuzzy edge when you're using the um, clone tool because it helps it blend in. If you use a hard-edged one, it's often a little bit noticeable. But for the um, healing brush, which is this um, bandage thing, it's easier to use the hard edge because then it's just wherever you brush it, it will heal. Um, can everyone see where the icons are? Um, this is a clone stool, the little thing that looks like a stamp. This is the healing brush, the bandage. Um, this is actually rescalable, so they may be in slightly different positions. But if you hover over them, it will say. See, clone tool, healing tool. <coughs> so let's talk about what, what, what you do in image restorations. So this is a photograph. Um, there's a tendency for the colors to change constantly. Even if two bits look about the same color, say this bit here and um, this bit up here, they can actually be quite different colors. So it's usually better with photographs to use the healing brush for anything that's not like quite close to each other. So the basic rivets restoration are actually fairly simple. Control click on a bit that doesn't have a lot of damage, move, move the cursor to where the damage is, and remove it. Repeat until all the damage is gone. And yes, this can take a while. We're not going to do all of this, but let's look at a slightly more difficult situation. Um, here on the nose, we'll have to be careful to maintain the shape of the nose while removing this damage. So you want to find texture that is quite similar. Um, for instance, 
if we take this bit, the texture should, should match the bridge of this nose here. We can move on to this bit here with that bit. And then we need to drop the size of the tool a bit to get this little bit here and there. And we just need to keep changing the source to match what we want it to be grabbing from. Sometimes we have to undo it, but with a little bit of work and a little bit of care, we can remove quite a bit of damage from his face rather quickly. So let's look, let's see. Yes, it is downloaded. Let's look at a, a slightly different case. Um, the Puss in Boots image I talked about earlier. So we'll just close this one for now. Um, I'll show you a um, finished version at the end. But the basics of this are pretty much the same. It's just you have to keep doing it and do the whole image systematically, top to bottom, and then move over and just go through through until you've done the whole image and then a second pass and with a bit of work, you've done it. So, and you want to save it for this. Um, the next one we'll be looking at is a lithograph from uh, Germany, I believe 1850s. Both these images are, pu are public domain. Um, this is Puss in Boots. Now then, if we zoom in on this, we'll see that it's not that bad overall. And since it's a, since this is actually, um, this looks like it's hand colored to me, although I may be wrong on that. But the major problems with this kind of thing are usually these discolorations here. And I probably can't see them as well on the projector as you can on the computer screen. But you often get light brown discolorations in books because um, it's how water damage tends to look out over time, I believe. And um, also creases, such as this one. Now, for this kind of thing, we can use a clone brush. I'd suggest using one of the fuzzy brushes. Um, let's move out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. These are the fuzzy brushes. Um, you can see this has a quite a sharp boundary. These ones have fuzzy boundaries of varying degrees. So if we use this one and I, move, and I copy it over, it will gradually blend into the background more than you would have used a hard edge brush such as this one. The other brushes um, aren't that useful for image work except for this square barred one, which can be useful right around borders when you just want to um, use a gigantic brush and he only brush the big area that has lots of damage that no one will look at for more than two seconds. But, yes. So, the methods for this are actually quite similar. You control click for, for the clone, and you just go over and carefully work out the damage. Um, so that's the basic image restoration. Um, we actually have some time to look at a few of the other things we can do with images. So let me just close down my brush tool and um, hide this for a moment. And I'll show you a little bit about some of the other things we can do. Um, looking at this image, it's a little bit unsharp. Um, this should be done after you do all the other restoration normally, but because this is a talk, I am going to be skipping ahead slightly. There are a few filters. The enhance, under the Enhance toolbar, there is Sharp and Unsharp Mask. Now, I usually find Unsharp Mask is a little bit too much for things. Um, it well, you can see as it flicks over that it becomes far brighter, far sharper, but it's too sharp, basically. You can tone down the amount a bit and so on, but you want to be using very small amounts of this if you use it, because otherwise it looks fairly unnatural. It also takes forever to process, so I'm going to... It takes like about two minutes to process the thing on this side of the image, so... Um, did everyone see the preview min preview window for it? Mm. Okay, then, we'll, we'll, then I won't show you the um, full image with that on. But the simpler one is just a sharpen tool. It's not as it's not as effective at removing blurring, but it's fairly good 
for example, um, you just get this, try to find this bit of the image. Uh, here we are. You can see the face there and the face there. Um, I have no idea how well this is going to show up on the projector, for which I apologize. But, um, yes, five people here. Why don't you all come up here? And, I mean, it won't, it not, maybe that great, it may not look that great on the video, but <laughs> we can get it, they can look behind me. Oh, crap. So, this is the sharp. this is sharpen, and we're looking at, doesn't really matter which area we're looking at, but um, if you move the sharpen over, you can see that becomes more and more sharp. That again? Yes. So this is without the sh pretty much without the sharpness applied. And if you move it over, it gets sharper and sharper. Nice. But um, you, don't want to, you don't want to overdo it because it can actually make it add. If you overdo it, it can actually add a lot of artifacts to the image because it will like take a bit where there are some like just very subtle changes in colors and it will make them look be major, major differences in colors. So I generally find that around um, between about 10 to 30 generally looks pretty good in this. It's a good, it's better than it was, because you can see that's very soft there. But it doesn't take it too far. This one I might actually go a bit further and go up to about 43, which is pretty sharp without being, with the minimum risk of artifacts. Now if we apply this one, since it's fairly quick, you can see the image looks better. Overall, so that's the image sharpened, and all controls that said to remove the sharpening looks a lot blurrier. With sharpening, without. As you can see, it's a noticeable difference and quite useful. The other thing we can do is that um, just cut down so that people on much of this on video can see it. Is that if we zoom out a bit you'll notice that the image has a lot of stuff around this. Uh, this is a color bar. You can use that to, if you have one of these, it's really convenient for getting the original paper colors because what you can do is, using this um, levels tool, you can adjust the white balance, the, the gray balance, and the black balance. And if you have a color bar, it's actually fairly simple. You find the black color bar and put that as your black point. Um, just click on the droppers to set white point. You find the white color bar and set that as your white point. And it gives you uh, somewhat more natural colors. The one thing to note is that you can some this can this does tend to add a bit more saturation to the images. You notice that without it the colors are a bit duller. And when you add it back in, the colors are a bit brighter. I have a question. Is it but it's a more accurate uh, saturation? Not necessarily is the thing. Okay. I mean, this may, be, in this case, I'd probably leave it in because it's probably a more accurate depiction of how it was before before some fading. But in some images, it can become oversaturated. Sorry. And then you want to, um, and then what you should probably, it's often a good idea to go into the hue saturation tools and just knock down the saturation a little bit. But, as I said, for an image like this, the saturation is probably best a little bit higher than it was. Um, the other thing is, is, though, that even with the color bar, sometimes you'll want to look at, you'll look at this and you'll think, that paper is faded, I want to restore it to the original. So sometimes you'll actually want to go against the color bar and just kind of eyeball it a bit. But, um, that probably is a little bit too much for a short talk. <laughs> now then, but the last thing you can look at is removing all the outside bits so it's ready for use. There's two tools used for this. The first one is, um, the first one we want to look at is the um, rotate tool, which is under tools. Transform tools, rotate. This lets you even out the window. Now, the way I usually do this is not is I just use the window bar as a straight edge, put it at the corner, and see what sticks out, basically. 
Um, this actually works better in XP than it does on higher levels of Windows. Another thing you can do, though, if you don't want to, if you um, don't want to do that, is that GIMP has a useful tool where you can, if you click at the top of the window, you can drag down a bar, and that's a straight edge. So if we put in a couple straight edge bars, we can get an idea of how rotated this is. And this one is actually pretty straight. I don't think we need to change it, but we're going to change it anyway because this is a demonstration. <laughs> So, um, if we use the rotate tool, you can just um, slowly count it up, and it, the, as you can see, the image is rotating. Um, and the object is to get it as straight compared to the bars as you can. Um, I'm guessing about 0.5 is about as much as we want to do here since it's so straight already. Um, one thing to know is that sometimes the bottom and the side edges and the top won't all be at the same rotation. Um, it'll be slightly out of true. In that case, it's best just to try to find a compromise. And unless you think that the, that the problem might be that it lived off the page, in which case there's some other more advanced techniques you can use, like the perspective tool. But um, in this case, it's so straight already, we don't even need to really be using the rotating tool, but, you know. Um, the final tool is the crop tool. So if we get our toolbox back. Oh yeah, the eyes dropped it down there. I don't normally do that. Um, we could pull up this little thing looks like a knife, and that's our crop tool. All you do is you drag it over the image, and move this out of the way. You can pull it into position, and that is such an easy, that is something I do, a mistake I make a lot, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're dragging it on. Yeah. And um, this paper is quite straight, so we want to make sure it's inside of the paper. And we hit enter on that. It takes the crop, and we are now very roughly done with the image. Awesome. Cool. And that's the basics of image restoration. Obviously, there are more advanced techniques, but this will give, this is enough knowledge to, to basically do it your first restoration if you choose something that is in reasonably good shape already. And particularly if you scan your own images, there usually are far less problems with those kind of things because um, in books they're somewhat protected. And if you put a something flat behind them when you scan them, they'll be held still and they won't have any distortion and stuff. So you just need to clean them up a bit, rotate it, and you're done. Um, maybe you could talk a bit about the file formats to make sure you need oh, to store Oh, good point, actually. Um, a lot of files, there are, there's two types of file formats, the lossless and the, and the lossy, basically. Um, lossless formats are TIFF and PNG for ones that Wikipedia accepts, and the most common lossy file formats are GIF and JPG. Um, it's usually best, to, in my opinion, to save most things as PNG and JPEG. JPEG. Um, PNG is much smaller than TIFF. Um, this file, for instance, is about 80 megabytes in TIFF, and I believe it would probably be about 20 megabytes in PNG, which is a major savings. And since it's lossless, you can save something in PNG a thousand times and as long as your computer isn't corrupted or something, it will look exactly the same after 20 times. However, if you say something in a lossy file format like JPEG 20 times, you will slowly get artifacts and damage throughout the image. Um, it's called JPEG artifacting. In fact, there is, I believe, a Wikipedia article on it. You may have heard of that, <laughs> that website, um, Wikipedia. So, 
This is a rather extreme version that, um, again, probably easier to see on the screen than on the on that. But um, look at this one. You you can see that it's fairly crisp, and on this one you get all these little funny little squares, which are compression artifacts. Um, JPEG is usually pretty good for the first time, as long as you save with high enough quality settings. I generally go with between about about 99%, which is um, just a significantly significantly lower file size than 100%, but um, not so not so much lower that you can ever actually tell the difference. Um, but you should usually always upload your restorations of both PNG and JPEG because if anyone wants to make more changes, they should upload. They should be editing the PNG. Um, if I had to remember to speed this up, um, yes. For example, this is the JPEG version of mine. But if you look down here, um, this one had a rather complex licensing, as you can probably tell. But um, yes. If you look down here, you'll see that I've linked to, um, there's a J, the JPEG version, a PNG version, and the original scan are all linked one after the other. So if someone wants, wants to reach the PNG, they can click on the PNG version and download it. Um, PNG are great, but the one problem is that they look a lot blurrier on Wikipedia because um, when the thumbnail or tool for PNGs does not actually apply any, any image sharpening, but the JPEG image scaler does, so the PNGs have a tendency to look a bit softer. Sometimes it's a good thing, but um, for a lot of types of images, it's not. Um, Chris, you do a lot of image restoration. Do you have anything you'd like to add? For the basics, no, basically, that's it. All right. Um, well then, I think this is a good point to end the talk then. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot about that. I was going to say that um, when you're reconstructing things, it can help to get a bit... It's, if you do ever need to reconstruct something in an image, it's helpful to grab elements from the image itself that you can use. Like, not like whole elements. You don't want to clone an entire face or something. But if you, if you do need a face to fill in a gap in an image, if you like grab the eye from one face or half the eye from one face and half the eye from the other and so on, and the nose from a third option and so on, and you're very careful at blending them together, you'd often get better results than if you um, try to redraw them from scratch, because at least it's in the style of the original artwork. Um, Obviously, this is an extreme form of digital manipulation that needs to be that you need to um, have a good reason to do. For instance, if it's just like one tiny thing in the background of an image that that's otherwise quite good, then okay, yes, do the restoration. But if it's like this is a picture of Je of President Lincoln, but you can't actually see Lincoln's face because he has this huge blob blocking off that much of it. That is probably a case where you should just give up. <laughs> um, but it does, the one thing I can say about this is it does help you become a better artist, um, having to pay attention to how other people draw things and really focus on things can help a lot. This is my view. <laughs> anyway, thank you, and that is probably the longest lightning talk that we've ever been away with in a um, in a uh, Wiki, Wikimania conference. <laughs>
There's a few things like, I think that um, for clearing up big bits of blank paper like borders, GIMP can still be a bit of a pain, but I think Photoshop has like um, automated ways of doing it, but you know, it's like five minutes extra work on your image. Well, could be worse. <laughs> Um, also, all the controls I gave will work in GIMP, but I believe Photoshop uses completely different controls, so... Any other questions? All right, then. The talk is really over this time. <laughs> uh, but uh, Adam was talking about reusing parts of a different image. I've got something up here already if you want to take a quick look. Oh, yes. Um, uh, something I did. So I... Actually, I want to show you this. I screwed up one of the pictures, but... Okay, so, for example, this is Terry Thomas, an English actor. This is the, how we got the publicity photo. And after about, I think it was about an hour and a half, two hours, I ended up with this. Nice. Uh, so you can see that yeah. up here, this was completely reconstructed. It's not in the exact same position. Yes. But this huge black... <laughs> has to be completely erased. Yes. Right? And then for the fingers here, I screwed up one and I wanted to see if you got it or would we'll fix that. But see here, his tips of his fingers are gone. Yes. We but get we that use, fingers yes. useful here. So we used I used one of these and moved it over here. These two turned out pretty well. The top one and the fine. So Yes. The, there's, there's a tool in that you can use to flip the selection mm -hmm. horizontally, which can be quite useful for things like that. And you also you would also rotate them slightly to try to make them match even better. And yeah, that's another thing is that if you can find bits of pattern that are the same, I think right. these two are the same. Yeah. You can select this and copy it over to here, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I did. Uh, and uh, one thing which I found I found very useful on GIMP, and I don't think it's going to be in the video, but you use a square select over two different rain color ranges, mm -hmm. like over here, because that will end up being easier to line up, and it won't mm -hmm. start the whatever you call it, the blurring or something, because it. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I did actually show what happens. You get positioning wrong, but if you get if you um, are copying a single color um, source as your basis for a healing brush and you accidentally move it over into like a border between a light area and a black area, it attempts to fix that by smooth by creating a gradient between the two. Which is what it should do, but yes. <laughs> it doesn't help very much. No. <laughs> so something like that I found is very useful for working with borders, for mm. example. Yes. Although I find that sometimes, even if you have that border, it will still, it will still just start the um, blur at the border. Mm -hmm. It varies. <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, we. This isn't feature picture quality because I think because of so much digital restoration and the size. But you can see the 76 got out of there. We got this a couple of other things. So it's very useful. And this is now part of a featured article on the actor, hmm. which I don't think something like this would have been accepted. Yeah. I mean, I suppose you could have cropped it to that bit, but at that point, you're, you're throwing out so much of the original image. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Especially not with uh, only this much. It's too cool. Oh, it's yeah. Too cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I'm, I think that I'm most proud of this one, even though it's not. Uh, feature quality is still yes. something that. Um, how long did that take you? An hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, I find that wow. I find that, fe that restoration usually takes about between about one and. Depends I had on one stage. that one that I told you about was that had been folded up and fell into um, a thousand into like twenty different blocks. I think I probably put about thirty hours at yeah, one, but, but that's because I'm insane. <laughs> Some of these, like uh, this mummy poster, the mummy uh, 1930s. Oh, that's a good one of yours. <laughs> it was absolutely nothing to change except for one thing. So yeah. it took all of ten minutes. Yes. Ten minutes. You, 
you could often get, yeah, yeah there are sometimes get lucky. I got one, right. um, I had one recently that I didn't, did it actually show in the gal that gallery at the beginning kind of did feel right, that um, it was literally just a scanner area. It showed, it showed a bit of the image, it showed that bit again, and then it carried on. So I just had to remove the repeated bit. Uh, it was a straight line. Pulled the bit up, cover it over, and it was done. <laughs> I don't know how that glitch happened, but once I figured out what the glitch was, it was really, it took five minutes to fix stops. <laughs> oh, there it is. See, there was this one line, you can barely see it without zooming in. Oh, yeah, part. right uh, there. So this is a scanning artifact from when they scanned the poster. So all I had to do was clean that up. That might not necessarily be a scanning artifact. That could poss that could possibly be a long scratch when they moved it through the roller of the scanner or something or something like that. But it's greenish, so I was oh, thinking it's maybe you're right. Yeah. So that was the only thing I had to do. Yeah, I didn't read much of it. Yeah. Yeah. Turned out okay. Yes. But how we. If you, if any of you want to know a good like starter one, if you email me, if you send me a message on Wikipedia, and can we move an attribute It's in the schedule actually, so uh, I could probably point you to ones that don't right. need that much yeah, to do. Yeah, it requires some interesting DM infrastructure as well. I know to Rogue they used to keep a list of yeah. of ones that were very relatively easy and good for newbies. I'm not sure how many of them have taken up yet. I did forget. This is one that. I wanted to do what is in such a mess. Uh, I spoke to her for a bit. Uh, you said that. She'll be a hit on the Yes. Uh, I should, let me just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'll go back to her. Yeah, so I'll talk to this. She's the guy with the. Yeah, I think you know this. I just want to make sure. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm like, you said that. That's there. I'm not going to come in and say yet. So you can just leave everything. Uh, your call. I think it. I think it actually it goes away and then you uh, turn the computer off. But you know, there's nothing on there. Right? This one I was working on. This one is actually a bit more. Not at all. So yeah, that was just some issues. As far as all that goes, David doesn't have a right number, so he wouldn't be. No, right. I tried to work out. Terry seemed uh, uh, Terry was like, well, why don't yeah, you been been know, like, that that is, you know, was like, well, we're essentially you can be Anyway, yeah. Stuff, right? uh, uh, I need to do, do need to uh, with Victor uh, at some uh, point, but. Uh, all right. Like the uh, yeah. Uh, and so it was like, I was like, we're all being He was like, maybe I'm going to attach to you, all satisfied. I'm like, we're essentially already doing it. Except the dude actress. So she was. Oh, yes. Lizzie was like, oh, she got Oh, yeah. So this is a quick conversation you want to win, so we have to follow that of course. Uh, but James Lippy seems willing to like do some travel budget to get Steve's come for a little party. Oh, and that's the actual thing that you all said. Because he did ask me like what he was. Which is why people stopped voting on the painting side. Not many, because I can find it in the five. Ah. These, he generally don't have to store. I should get it. I get it. 
Oh, good. <laughs> To um, avoid having all these comments, I decided to put Nader at the top instead of one of the BD series. Right. This is, oh yeah, it's a photographic series of an intersex person focusing on the genitals. <laughs> according to the source I read, it was the first medical documentation of an intersex person to Wow. First photograph. And this is, has been restored? Uh, one of them, yes. I some, in some cases, you just have something you want. In some oh. cases, you just have something you want to do, but you can't actually find the uh, find high level resolution for it. Yeah. I mean, the image is only about 300 by 600. There, I mean, you maybe you can remove one or two highly visible things roughly, but you're not going to really be able to do that much with it. They're just hidden the detail there. You're basically trying to um, approximate, you're, what you're basically trying to do in that case is approximate um, the anti aliasing of um, smaller elements. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you can stay as long as you like. All right. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just to tie in what Adam was talking about, like this is just under the resolution, well, just this one, but well, under the resolution. Which they accept the feature picture now. Yeah, although I still, I, I, I said agree with you, you should just IAR that one, ignore so, all rules. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I still did it because it's a very nice picture. Yes. Him. But I have, it happens. I basically did a series of, pre I think I restored every um, picture of the part of HOS Pinafore they had on the LSC site as best they could, but some of them were really crappy scans. Mm -hmm. Now you also get situations where the LSC puts up a scan, but they obviously did like six, like ten years ago before they had good scanning technology, so it's blurry and mm -hmm. low resolution and that kind of thing, so. And actually something very easy to get into. Um, okay, so there's a lot of these coin images, right? Yeah. And GIMP lets you do really easy circle crops mm -hmm. if you just know how to move it, yes. basically. Yes. So something like this can take you five minutes, six minutes. Yes. In cool. that. And it really helps in the... Oh my god, it's in the queues. Awesome. Thank you. Anyway. On that 35. <laughs> or is it only on... Because uh, I've got a Mac. Oh, it, it, it works on Mac. Okay. Uh, as I said, I think it's, where I said control click, just, I think it's command click on Macs. I don't actually use Macs, but I believe it's pretty much the same, other than that. No. Okay, we've got something I can just do live. That one isn't as bad as the, as some of the other ones. No, this is, is a three, this is a two minute. Yeah. When I'm at home, it takes me more like time to upload these things than it is. I know the feeling. <laughs> oh, uh, Adam, do yes. You, do you want to talk on camera? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, oh crap! 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 What's that? I meant to switch into a visual editor shirt before, shirt before giving this talk. Uh, do you have one? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll put it on halfway through the talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the you, can put it, you can put it on ahead of time. No, I'll uh, put it on halfway through this one. It'll be a new. It'll be a good visual. You know what? Uh, tell you what. How about? Uh, no, I think I think it would be better actually if you had it on. Okay. Uh, beforehand, but hold on, hold on. Uh, what do you say? I'll get the camera set up in the uh, uh, lobby area. Right. Of this, of this building. Sure. Uh, and then we can just go from there. And all I want you to do, basically, is because uh, what Ron told me was that you yes. were a, a huge opponent of the visual editor. Yes. And then you saw one of the talks. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd come down from huge opponent to I don't like it, but I can I, I can live with these with these concessions kind of thing. But I, I actually went into the talk kind of a little bit hostile to it. But well, actually, I suppose we should save it for the camera, shouldn't we? Well, yeah, yeah. Let's, so, like, yeah, I want to talk about that because I think I'm basically trying to document all of Wikimania, like what is Wikimania, what's the, uh, what's the point of Wikimania? Yes. And uh, that's one of those things that is, 
this is a great example of that because uh, you know because you you came into it hostile of it and you changed, you're changing your mind. Yeah. Uh, because you were face to face as opposed to being online, I think. I am also. Or partly, I think that had probably. It also it also made me focus on self focus on it. You know, maybe it, maybe I would have changed my mind if I'd seen the talk online, but. Let's save it for the camera. Let's save it yes. for the camera. So we'll give me a chance to get the camera set up. Yeah. I don't suppose either of you guys has two AA batteries. Yes, uh, I've got a ton. Awesome. Uh, oh, that right. brought, yeah, that brought a whole bunch. Oh, wow. Thank you. My uh, lab's died, so. And she's up already. Uh, I'm just going to be real fast. Yeah. Nicely done. I don't know, uh, Bebolt has gotten all the beautiful coins. Oh, yeah. And he's probably a coin He's probably other coin collector works for museum, I guess. He's a coin collector. Uh, and he, this one, he's negotiated free releases from people who photograph coins. Ooh. <laughs> which is why we're getting such nice... And this uh, is... Oh, this is stunning. Which one? Liberty... Oh, yeah. That's the... But the thing about coin photographs, I don't know if you've looked into that, but... I, I, never, I never had a good enough camera to really do coin photographs in all honesty. Uh, or well, I don't well, see my camera. Uh, but you know copyright issues there, right? Um, well, it's all right if it's U.S., but mm -hmm. other one, elsewhere, yeah. yeah. 50 years, usually. So, it's a pain for them because bills you can download them right off the internet for coins. Yes, because they're 3D, you have to photograph them yourself. Same with metals and so on. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyway, it might actually be on camera. <laughs> this thing's still on. <laughs> yep, we're being recorded. <laughs> I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit the. No, wait. You know what? I'm leaving that up there. They can remove it. I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll edit things away. It's not that we said anything we shouldn't have. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be sending my friend a message, and then I think I'm going to go downtown and check out the souvenirs. All right. Now I'm going to go and to get that interview in, and then. Uh, Wikipedia UK are having some sort of um, dinner tonight, so I better find out find out the details right, right. for that. I heard Jimbo's doing a press conference over dinner too, so what if yeah. I I know I'm on camera, but I'm uh, interested in hearing what Jimbo says, but I don't I you know, he is one person in the end, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not a member of the so-called cult of Jim, though. <laughs> mm, no. You know, he seems like a nice guy. He, yeah, I he, he was clever for him up with Wikipedia and all that kind of thing, but at some point it moves beyond being one person or the site is kind of doomed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to say it was nice doing that with a smaller group, actually. I could bring them up. I was tempted to, have, to let them try it out, but I, in the end, it was one of those things where it's just like there are just enough people that might take take a while. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it's her. I hope it's her. Is it her? Is she finally answer it or me? No. no, it's people talking about happy eat. Okay. Oh well. <sighs> eat? Oh, Rob is Robin done already? Yeah, he was yesterday, I think. <sighs> I always get that confused because it, it's not, you know, it's um, it wanders around the Western calendar because it's uh, because, because one of those lunar calendars. Oh, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Let's do it then. See you later, Chris. Yep. Uh, the camera's still on though. I know, <laughs> but I don't want to. I don't want to turn it off and risk um, screwing something up. So I figure, leave it off, leave it on, and so we'll get some extra footage. <laughs>